Hey YouTubers, I got a really good video for you. It's it's an older article, um, but it's relevant to our time right now. Let me see. It's April 4, 2017. It's a few months old, but it's still, like I said, relevant to our times today. Is Vancouver lonelier than most cities or just better about addressing it? The city has launched a series of initiatives to combat social isolation amid polls suggest, suggesting one in four residents have grappled with the problem. So it's a very, very in-depth, long article. So I'm just going to leave a link for you guys uh, to read it. And it it has long been rated as one of the world's most uh, livable cities, but beyond its dazzling skyline and ocean views, Vancouver has for years struggled with an issue it's rarely featured in any global ranking, loneliness. Amid pulse suggesting one in four Vancouverite residents have grappled with social isolation, the city has launched a range of initiatives amid to combat the problem. The municipal government entered the fray in 2012 with the launch of the Engaged City Task Force, a working group to tackle the sense of discontentedness, well, I didn't even think that was a word, that many residents felt. But when the group's 22 members met for the first time, some of them wondered if the authorities were overstepping their boundaries, said member Mark. We sat around a table going, we are supposed to make sure everyone is happy. The roots of the issue is a series of surveys carried out by Vancouver Foundation, a community group asked 275 charitable organizations and more than 100 community leaders across the Metro Vancouver to weigh in on the most pressing concerns facing the city. So I was asked this. Um, I talked to somebody about this from one of the newspapers. This was about a year and a half ago. Not for this specific one, but asking me uh, my points of use as a business owner in Vancouver. Uh, what I thought of, of this whole situation, right? Few pointed to poverty and ho or homelessness. Instead, leaders detailed a growing sense of isolation among Metro Vancouver's 2.4 million residents. It was very surprising, said Linda of the Vancouver Foundation. The precipitation, the, the precipitation was confirmed the following year in the survey. Uh, participation? No. Precipitation was confirmed the following year. The survey, about 3,800 residents, about 25% of those polled, said they felt lonely at times. While one in three said they found it hard to make new friends in the city. One man confirmed that he's since moving to Vancouver seven years ago for work. He had never been once asked to go out for a beer. That's probably me. Those who reported feeling most alone were between ages 24, 24 to 34. So I'm going to leave a link below. I want you guys to take your time to read this. Uh, there's a, it links into a really good article I might read later. It says, race and real estate. How hot Chinese money is making Vancouver unlivable. I might read that one another day on the, on the show, but I want to know what you guys think here. And I'm going to tell you guys my little uh, spin on this and what I think, to be like, like really frank. I lived in Vancouver for... Since 2008, just 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 before late 2007, just before the crash, um, and when I arrived there, it was really hard to talk to anybody. Um, it was really hard to because when I lived, I was living in Miami. In Miami, you could pick and choose. Wow, look at that! Is Maria Le Lupe, hey, uh, Guadalupe, Esmeralda, como estas? It's a very different, hey, Latin swing, how's it going? You know what I mean? Like, great feel, everybody's happy, you know? But, my, in my opinion, uh, in my opinion, the reason why Vancouver is very unhappy is because there's a huge lack of Latin culture. There's not a lot of Mexicans. There's not a lot of people from Brazil, which they speak Portuguese. They don't want to be called Latin. Um, uh, people from Guatemala, Honduras. I've been to a lot of uh, Cuban house parties. Amazing food, women, dancing merengue. It's amazing. You know, you get lost in a trance, you know. 
Uh, I've been to a lot of uh, Cuban house parties, Puerto Rican house Puerto Rican house parties are amazing. I've been to lots of you know uh, Paraguay uh, Paraguayan house parties. I've been Mexican fiestas and 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 and, and parties and stuff. But but the problem is the problem is that lack of people like that lack of swing and and harmony and family oriented is lacking in Vancouver huge. So it doesn't bring that vibe. Like when you're in Vancouver, uh, Van when you're in Miami, when you're in West Palm Beach, when you're anywhere in the southern states, usually you get that Latin swing, that vibe, that's, hey man, como estas? Dono eres? Vene para acá, vamos a hablar? It's like people, block parties, cl streets closed down for block parties. Um, people knocking on my door like six times a day. Hey, estas bien? Asking me, you okay, man? Yeah, si, estoy bien. ¿Qué pasó? Yeah, I need to go to Fort Lauderdale. Come with me, man. I say, you know? Yeah, okay, let's go. What are you getting? Some car parts. When I moved to Vancouver, that never happened. That that was, it was like, holy smokes. You know, nobody talked to me. I was single for so many years. And uh, Vancouver, I noticed that if you're under 5'10", you're finished. You, No one will talk to you. Latin girls, they don't care how tall you are. They're, they're you know, they're just happy and, and, and very up, up, you know. Luckily... There, I met a Filipino woman who didn't, didn't care about my height, didn't care about anything. She just liked me for who I was and, and, and actually liked being around me and spending time with me and went out of her way many times for me. And it's like, wow, yeah, this girl's definitely a keeper. You know what I'm saying? But in Vancouver, no, I never, it was really hard to even go on a date. I, I would ask so, so many women that would be on dating sites. I'd go to clubs, libraries, walking down the street. I had a lot of free time. I own my own company. And then when I wanted to date or meet women or go out and have fun, I would have to leave the country. I would go to Thailand, uh, Taiwan, um, Peru, Honduras, Brazil, uh, Mexico many times. I've been to Mexico so many times, you have no idea. Practically lived there for two years. So basically, it's that's what I had to do basically to... To go out and about and feel social again was I had to leave the city. And that's just my opinion. That's what I, I you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, it's it's really hard to, to, to get that, you know, to when you're alone. Because I was alone a lot. That's why I bought my dog Florida. And then from I had her for a couple of years. Then I met my wife. But she was fresh off the boat. She was um, didn't get into that whole lifestyle, you know, clubs and stuff. She didn't care. It's like, I don't care. I want I want a family. Like, really? It's like, I really do. I want a family. And it's like, holy crap. I've never heard anyone say that to me in, like, decades. Anyways, let me know what you guys think. I'd like to know your opinion on this. Comment below. And, and is your city like this, too? Thanks for watching.